Good evening, gentlemen. It's nice talking to you again, but today I'm going to talk on something which is very important academically and will also be of knowledge to the younger students who are preparing for any examinations. I'm going to talk about communism and how it is a failed philosophy, both politically and economically. Gentlemen, uh, let's understand one thing, that in the 19th century, there was something called the Industrial Revolution which swept Europe. This saw the industrialization of Europe and the rise of capitalism. The workers' conditions were very poor and all the money was being pocketed by the capitalists. In such a scenario, there is a man called Karl Marx who made an appearance. Now Marx uh, was a philosopher. But he faced persecution in Germany and ultimately went away to England where he died and his tomb is there in London. But he left behind an economic and social theory which at that time in the 19th century and toward the end of the 19th century had tremendous appeal. He talked of certain phrases which have become very very famous now like dictatorship of the proletariat Religion is the opium of the people. Workers of the world must unite. All power should be in the hands of the working class. Capitalists are exploiting labor. And hundreds of other theories. Marx concentrated on the Western democracies at that time, the monarchies or whatever you call it, that is Germany, France and England, which were the leaders of the industrial revolution. He didn't have much to say anything about India and China and even Russia at that time and his knowledge was basically very rudimentary. Marx created a utopia, a utopia of a classless society where everybody would be equal and everybody would get whatever he wanted as per his needs. It looks fine on paper but there was one fatal flaw in his theory and that was he never spelled out the means when and how this utopia could be achieved. Well, the Western democracies, monarchies and the ruling class at that time suppressed the communist movement which never got off and they reformed. But surprisingly, this theory of Karl Marx took roots in Russia. Now, that is the, one of the most difficult things to understand why it should take root in Russia of all places. And once that took place in Russia, well, what happened then was something extremely difficult to describe because there was a man called Vladimir Lenin and this man adapted the Marxist theory, made his own interpretations and applied it to Russia. Now, Marx had written entirely on the industry in Germany and England and the exploitation of the workers. He didn't have any vision about Russia. But Lenin applied this theory to Russia without understanding what exactly Marx meant. As I said, the biggest flaw of Marx was talking of a classless, classless society, a utopia, but he never spelled out the means it could be achieved. There is no way he could say how you are going to achieve this. And that is a very fatal flaw. Lenin made his own interpretations and he decided that he must oppose the Tsarist state. The Tsar was the ruler in Russia at that time, but all credit to the Tsar that he had expanded the Russian Empire to make it the biggest in the world. That's number one. Number two, Russia was a power to reckon with. But then he was not aware of the white ants eating the roots of the Tsarist state led by Lenin who at that time of course in Switzerland while he had his lieutenant Trotsky and Stalin who was in Russia organizing a resistance against the Tsar. The Tsar should have got wind of it and crushed this movement but he somehow failed to gauge the enormity of what was happening because in Russia there was at that time a degree of chaos. Food was not available, economy was sluggish 
and the Tsar was having grandiose dreams of fighting on the side of the British and the French against Germany. So he ended the First World War, that is Tsar Nicholas II, against Germany and the net result was in the various battles that took place, the Tsarist forces were routed, they were beaten. There was discontent in the Russian army. There was discontent among the population that the, the army had been defeated. And on top of it, the economic crisis, lack of food, was fueling a resentment against the Tsar. And Lenin was writing articles and theories all about how Marxism should be applied to Russia, which the Tsar, yeah, Tsar should have gauged, which couldn't gauge. And Stalin was a henchman who was executing all the uh, groundwork in Russia. After the defeat of the Tsar at the hands of the Germans, there was a revolution in Russia in 1917 and a moderate group called the Mensheviks came into power. Their leader was Kerensky and he was a moderate in the sense he wanted that the Tsar should continue but at the same time there should be a reform in the Duma that the Russian parliament and power to be transferred to the Duma. But Mensheviks were not strong people and Lenin then arrived from Switzerland and with the aid of Stalin carried out a revolution in Russia which is known as the October Revolution in which Kerensky finally ran away and he died in New York, you know, he escaped there. And the Tsar was captured, exiled to Siberia and on the orders of Lenin and Trotsky, another intellectual, so-called intellectual, executed. In fact, his entire family was shot dead. It's one of the most dastardly crimes in world history and no credit to the Soviet state which came into being at that time. The only equivalent of to this state is Pakistan, which has done similar acts like killing their leaders, you know, hanging Zulfikar Ali Bhutto on false charges of murder and whatnot. But I won't go into that now. What I'll say is that Russia at that time had become a lawless state. Lenin and Stalin and Trotsky in particular formulated the first concentration camps. Now the concentration camp is Trotsky's invention where thousands of Russians were taken, put into Siberia, made to do hard and menial work, labor, given very little food and allowed to die and hundreds and died, thousands died. Stalin who came to power in 1924 because he had grassroots reports, support, decided that the time had come that he must act against Trotsky. And a meeting of the Supreme Soviet, where he had the majority, Trotsky was exiled. But Stalin was not satisfied. Trotsky escaped to, from various countries and ultimately went and settled in Mexico City. And that is the place where he was writing prodigious articles against Lenin. Sorry, against Stalin. And Stalin was an unlettered man. Though he had horse sense, he could not tolerate the writings of Leon Trotsky and he sent a mercenary, a communist, committed communist, Ramin Mercer to go and kill him and he killed him. And the sad part is that after he got in prison under 20 years, this man went back to Russia in 1960 and was hailed as a hero of the Soviet Union. So this was a regime, the communist regime, which was basically a gangster regime. There was something during Stalin's time called the Midnight Knock. People would come, knock on your door and you knew you had it. You were either shot dead, taken away or sent to Siberia. And 1936-37, he carried out the famous purges of the seven comrades of Lenin whom he executed. Stalin, however, resented a little when the Germans attacked Russia in 41. That is the time he uh, galvanized all the Russians together to fight the so-called patriotic war and of course once they won the war it was back to square one because he was even going to get uh, Zulfika, uh, sorry, Marshal Zhukov executed that was his plan and uh, unfortunately he got a stroke, brain stroke and died in 1953 so Stalin ruled for 29 years and he really 
built up the Soviet state. And he built the Soviet state on a system of terror and on the army and the midnight knock and executing his opponents. I remember once reading that he was having a booze party with Winston Churchill and Churchill asked him uh, about the two million people who died of famine in Ukraine which was again created by Stalin to break the will of the peasants in Ukraine and Stalin said losing two million men and killing I think he said there more than that 10 million died but it is a historical necessity more important than defeating Germany so I do not know whether you could call him a patriot or what he was the communists in that sense were not patriots to Russia that is the point we must remember and the Indian Communist Party is similarly it is not patriotic to Indians they are looking for inspiration either to China and earlier they used to be looking for inspiration to Russia they are something un-Indian and the same thing happened in Russia Stalin interested in his personal megalomaniac stream not interested in anything else and when he died it was a terrible state though Russia had economically advanced because of the policies of Stalin no doubt about it but then came Nikita Khrushchev and in my view he is the greatest of the Soviet leaders he was in power from say 54 55 right up to 64 when he was removed but he was the man who was a true Russian patriot and he realized that Ukraine must be kept in the fold and he transferred the Crimea to Ukraine during his period but he had a lot of uh, economic failures and one of his biggest failures was to try to set up or duplicate the farmlands of Ukraine in Siberia it was a colossal waste money was lost tremendously and then there came the 1962 famous Cuban crisis where Khrushchev stepped down and that was his doom because in the meeting of the Supreme Pre Soviet he was outvoted and Leonid Brezhnev took over but thanks to the policies of Khrushchev he was not executed as he had not executed any of the other leaders who had opposed him after Stalin died but Brezhnev was not the man in this right seat and though he ruled for 18 years he had rudimentary knowledge of economics and he got involved in the war in Afghanistan lost it and that shattered Russia so badly and unfortunately after he died in 83 a string of leaders came into Russia the Soviet Union who were not patriots in the sense who had no knowledge of Marxism and who didn't know how to achieve the utopia which Marx has said as I told you Marx had created a utopia but he never laid down the means and one of the things we must remember is that the Russian state or the Tsarist state had always been an autocracy they never knew about democracy they didn't know democracy but one of the Soviet leaders starting with Cherenko and then later on Mikhail Gorbachev they talked of glasnost they talk of freedom equality and all that a thing which the Russian didn't understand so when he loosened the central reins the entire Russia which was economically bankrupt just collapsed and within a period of six months 18 states were created in Russia that the massive monolith Russian Empire which had been set up by the Tsars by great men like Peter the Great Ivan the terrible and others collapsed like a pack of cards and the philosophy the theory we brought it about this collapse brought about this collapse is communism and the Marxist theory as I told you gentlemen Marxism is something which is a utopia and there is no love for any particular country Marxism believes in universalism but you can't have universalism it's not possible and you can't have a classless society Stalin Lenin they tried a classless society by a method of execution by 
killing the intelligentsia, by killing the landed gentry, the aristocracy. That is not the way Marx had envisaged. In fact, Marx didn't know how to bring about this transformation into a classless society. But this is precisely what happened. So, gentlemen, the point to remember is that Marxism was a wonderful philosophy theoretically, but practically it had got nothing in common with the great philosophers like Aristotle or Plato. Nothing. It was a weak philosophy and idealism and without any nuts and bolts and how to build it. Brick by brick or stone by stone. How? Marx didn't know. He didn't spell it out. Lenin tried his own way and Stalin his own way. And then came the disastrous leadership of Soviet Russia led by Gorbachev. Many people told me he's a CIA agent. I don't think he was a CIA agent. He was just a simple foolish buffoon. But he broke up the monolith Russians of the Soviet state and Russia was reduced from a global power to a regional power and now it's finding it difficult even to beat Ukraine. Gentlemen, I am now coming to the end of my this short talk with you. Bear in mind that communism was a wonderful theory theoretically. Practically it was a big zero because though Marx painted a utopia, he never laid down the means how it was going to be achieved. And in that way, communism spelt the death knell of the Soviet state. And I'm afraid this will be the same thing wherever the communists have come to power and ultimately they will go away. The entire Eastern Europe, which was communism by force, has now broken away from communism and the people there hate the communists. Even in Russia, the Communist Party has no following. China has transformed, but we don't know what history is going to happen, how it's going to be treated. We don't know. There is North Korea, a Stalinistic state, but how long they last is another question mark. We'll have to wait and see. Gentlemen, I close now. Wish you all the best. Please subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, and come back for more. Goodbye, and I will close now and say, Jai Hind, glory to India. Bye-bye. God bless.